Well, hello friends and welcome to Ask Zach. Hope you're doing well today. Today we're gonna talk about kind of how to, you know, kind of an intro to Western swing guitar or kind of how to fake it at Western swing guitar, if you will. Uh, and, and that's said with all respect, I, uh, I love Western swing. And so the reason I'm doing this is actually one of my, uh, you know, Patreon members asked me, he said, hey, I'm playing in a country band and I, we're gonna do a Western swing number and I really don't know how to play over that. And I thought it was such a great question because you do, when you're playing Western swing, you need to think in a different mindset. And uh, from what you might do with, you know, playing over, you know, a, a straight ahead, you know, Bakersfield or a shuffle tune or things like that. And so today is just kind of a, um, an intro and some hacks, some cheats, you know, to help you, uh, you know, with your playing and your tone and just concepts. And so these will, uh, and these are very transferable. These also can be used in like blues and jump blues and all sorts of stuff. So don't think this is just for Western swing, but uh, this is something that will uh, really help you in that area. So of course, while you're thinking about it, uh, if you haven't done it already, and if you've been enjoying the show, please hit subscribe. If you've already done that, then I appreciate you supporting the show. There's uh, multiple ways, but the best is Patreon, and you can find more at the link in the description. There's also merch at askzack.com at the store, or there's good old tip jar information, and if you wanna do a, you know, a PayPal or Venmo or, or what have you, and it is much appreciated. I do need to say uh, thank you so much for the uh, wonderful responses I got on last week's episode about uh, you know the arthritis uh, diagnosis that I got. Um, I actually played last weekend, played two you know four-hour sets uh, in down in Tulsa. had a, uh, had a great time, played well. I was just sore you know at the at the end of the second night, and uh, but I was I've been okay since and just kind of uh, dealing with it and doing, you know, trying to do a better job with taking care of my hands and taking care of my health. All right, so let's, uh, let's dive in. So first off, your best friend when you're playing Western Swing are sixth and ninth chords. Uh, they really give you a tonality that says, I know what I'm doing. So let's just, you know, we're gonna start in the key of G and I'm gonna play some inversions of six and nine chords and sometimes doing it chromatically. I'm gonna do it slow and then, you know, you can slow it down and watch, watch it again later so you can kind of understand it better. And then you need to move these, you know, you need to transpose these into all the different keys. So we're gonna just do it in G first um, so first off you have this one, then the next one, again, this is, here's the next one, and, uh, you know, I'm just going to climb up, you know, way above, you know, on the, uh, on the 15th fret, so you can go. And that's basically just different inversions of that same chordal change over and over again. So starting up on the 15th fret. Then this one starts with your first finger you know, on the 7th fret, and you've got your, you know, your, your second finger on the 8th fret, and you've got your third finger on the 9th fret. You have this one. and then back to this first one again. So slow that down, learn that, and then move it into uh, other keys, and that will be extremely helpful for you. So this is the one we're gonna concentrate on right now. So starting on the, uh, so I've, I've got the first finger on the seventh fret, I've got the second finger on the eighth fret, of this, on the B string, and I've got the third finger on the ninth fret of the G string. OK, 
Okay, so what I did there was I took that simple, you know, G6 to G9 move. I, well, I did it chromatically. I went down a half step and then back up, you know. So that's me taking it up to C. And that was that was up on the uh, up on the twelfth fret, the first fingers on the twelfth fret, and then you move down to the uh, the first form again of G six, and then you can take it all the way down to that that G nine, and then I played a uh, a single note line run because doing this um, it's nice to have a motif, and it's nice to and it's nice to repeat the motif over the one chord and the four chord. But when you get to the five chord, let's do something different. And uh, so I always think a good, you know, single note line, you know, will sound good there. So here I'm. Let's see, here's another one based on this chord shape, this, this G6. Uh, we, can, uh, we can kind of ramp it up into kind of a double stop lick like this. So there, I took, uh, you know, part of this, I took just, you know, the, uh, the, on the high E and B strings, I'm playing, of course, the first fingers on the seventh fret, second fingers on the eighth fret on the B string. And then of course you're, uh, you're kind of playing this back and forth thing on the G string where you're playing on the, uh, the ninth fret and the seventh fret. So you and then you flat the third, which of course, go, which means that first finger is going to go from the uh, seventh fret down to the sixth fret. Then you have, and what that gives you is it gives you a G, uh, sorry, a C7 sh uh, tonality, or actually, and uh, yeah, and that's a that's a nice little double stop move. So again. That works really well. Again, this is all just using, and over the five chord, I used again this, this you know, this times it's a, a D6 to a D9. And that's your first fingers on the 10th fret, your second finger is on the, uh, the 11th fret of the G string, and your third finger is on the 12th fret of the B string, and then you're just moving it down chromatically. All right, uh, one more thing with this shape, and this is a, a really good descending lick. Yeah. So this was me just taking this shape and I'm playing it, you know, down, then up, down, then up, down, then just ending with kind of a curly cue kind of lick. So. And then of course you have that six, nine chord uh, that I, I love and probably overuse at times. Oh, uh, here's a, uh, here's a good uh, chromatic lick that works really well that you can go forward or backwards on. Again, we're staying in the key of G. 
Um, so that's going forward, and then you can go backwards with so that you can get a lot of mileage out of. Uh, also, just always thinking about the minor third to major third move. That always works well. Uh, half step below moves work really well. And that's kind of a, a jazz swing, you know, kind of move regardless. Um, but let's just take a, a G chord. So this is just a G bar chord. Well, if I approach it from a half step below, then I can get a really interesting sound. So I'm just gonna outline, outline this shape. So I'm gonna go. Yeah, again. Now I can, I can kind of, kind of come back some, I can kind of go forward and backwards. Great move. Uh, here's one that I learned from uh, John Jorgensen. Uh, actually, I think he was playing like some gypsy jazz and I really liked this thing. It's just a little section that I, that I stole from something where he was playing. And uh, it's perfect because it's, uh, I think of it as, as over, uh, you know, again, we're in the key of G, so we're thinking about this over the four chord, over the C, which, you know, would be, or just, so that's just, so think over a C9. Okay, so it's, uh, So it's so starting on the G string on the fifth fret and then going down to the third fret. Then I'll go to the B string on the fifth fret, B string third fret, E string fifth fret, E string third fret. And then back down. But on the G string I did a chromatic move and then hit that D string, you know, on the fifth fret, and then I did the major, you know, the minor third to major third move. Uh, yeah, that was uh, third fret to fourth fret on the G string, and then hit that, uh, that, low, uh, that low G on the, uh, on the D string on the fifth fret. Uh, uh, again, in the uh, kind of uh, half step below, um, I think the flatted, the flatted fifth is always a fun thing to, to start with. Uh, so, so in the key of G, you know, it's this uh, you know, D note, and I'm just gonna use this one here on the, uh, on the B string on the third fret. And so I start one fret below that. So it just, it just has a nice, um, you know, kind of ear catching, uh, you know, quality to it. So. And there I was, you know, kind of bouncing back and forth on the D string between the, uh, you know, fifth and third frets. You know, and, and again, always the, <laughs> You know, major third, minor third uh, kind of uh, move that uh, always, always works well. All right, now let, let's talk about some kind of do's and don'ts. So if you noticed in the way I was playing, uh, actually, let's, let's back up and I want to talk about one more concept that I, I really love, and that's octaves. And I don't mean that in the West Montgomery, you know, style. I mean it in uh, playing a, a kind of soprano note and then playing an octave below that. It, uh, it really works well in this kind of thing. 
So anything, again, always in the key of G for this, uh, you can go up to uh, you know the 15th fret and you go. So that's you know playing that 15th fret with your pinky and then on the E string and then playing the 12th fret on the G string. Uh, that works well. And then you can slightly bend on the, uh, on the 14th fret for the G, you know, for going over the one chord, the G. And then when you get to the C chord, you can play it again, but then play the, uh, you know, the 15th fret on the, on the G string to give it that uh, C7 tonality. Uh, also, I really like to use this kind of octave motif for uh, descending licks. Like uh, if I'm, if I'm again, always in the key of G for this episode, when I'm going from the five chord, which is of course your D, and I'm getting back to the one chord, uh, because, you know, there's so many moves that are one, six, two, five, or maybe it's just a simple one, two, five kind of move, but you end up a lot of, so many times going from the five, from the D chord back to the G. And so many times I like to do this move, which I'm starting on the, on the 10th fret with my pinky on the high E string. And then I'm playing the octave, which is on the seventh fret on the G string with my first finger. So you get this. Let's see. So again, and we're, we're moving chromatically down. Uh, yeah, that really works well. All right, now let's get back to uh, kind of do's and don'ts and tone and, and things like that. So one thing that I would say that I wouldn't do is I wouldn't do bending unless it was uh, you know like a half step or more. It just doesn't sound legit when you start doing pedal steel type bends because true Western swing, um, you know, when it was really at its at its height. You know, there were no, there, you know, people weren't using pedals on a steel guitar. So you don't have that bending string sound. And of course, people were using heavy gauge strings, you know, with a wound third. And so you don't hear string bending really, unless it's, you, know, you hear slurs and you hear half step bends. And you, but you don't hear whole step bends or blues bends. So I would kind of steer away from those. Um, Double stops, of course, are, are, are really great. That's, that's dues. Stay with those sixth, nine, 13, you know, chords and things like that. Uh, also tone-wise, uh, again, Western Swing was at its height in the 1930s and 40s, which means that most of those recordings don't have any type of effects on them at all. No reverb, no echo, no, no anything like that. And so many times uh, I will try to go for a drier sound. Now, sometimes it might just not work and I will you know, turn the reverb on or might use a little slapback delay, but most of the time I try to go for a drier sound. Like right now I have my, the reverb off on my little uh, headstrong uh, little king. And, uh, you know, but the only effect I am using is I'm using uh, one of the uh, J Rocket Archer pedals. They're, uh, they're the Icon, the Gold Archer. And, uh, and what I'm using that for is just for a boost so that I play a little lighter and also to add just a touch of hair. So I only have the, you know, the gain at like nine o'clock, which means that you're not getting, you know, you're getting some of that mid rangey tube screamer thing, but not, you know, a, a, a too big of a dollop of it. And I just really want to add a touch of hair. I don't really want it to sound distorted. Now at times I will use an overdrive pedal set really low also to kind of get this. And the reason I do this 
is that most of the time these recordings, you know, the amps, the guitar amps were, were really underpowered. And so many times they were running them at the top end of their uh, volume capability. And so uh, many times you've got a touch of, uh, of distortion, you know, or overdrive, you know, in the, in the sound that was used by these players in the 1940s and the 1930s. And so I like to replicate that because I think it sounds fun and I think it sounds more legit, more legit than a crystal clear, clean tone. I think a crystal clear tone just doesn't, I don't like it in Western swing. I mean, other, other guys do it and they do it great, but I'm more influenced by Junior Bernard who had a, a pretty dirty tone. And so, uh, yeah, I, so that's what I use it. My uh, one other note I have to say about this Archer pedal was, uh, I'm not really a big pedal modder, but uh, one of my Patreon fellows named Chad uh, kindly sent me a set of new old stock diodes, the kind that were actually used in the old clons, and changed that out. And it actually did uh, make a noticeable difference, especially in the high end. It made the trebles, the treble notes uh, became less cloudy. So anyway, so there's a... Uh, you know, one of one of the rare mods that I've I've done to a pedal and was actually felt like it did something. Okay, back to to tone. The other thing I do is I tend to st stay away from the bridge pickup on my telly, and so because I'm trying to get more of an arch top sound, which is what you know this you know Western swing you know originally was not cut with solid body guitars. So much of it was done before Leo started making the Tele and the Strat. Now, of course, later on, Eldon Shamblin got a Strat, and of course you have Jimmy Bryant and things like that, but that was really at the tail end of Western Swing's popularity. Um, you know, yeah, what Western Swing was, was really, you know, getting killed off by things like television and, uh, you know, honky-tonk music, shuffles, rock and roll, uh, all those things kind of ended the reign of Western Swing. And so, so much of Western Swing was done with big hollow body guitars with single coil pickups. And uh, so the closest I'm gonna get to that with a Tele, cause I'm not gonna bring another guitar just to play Western Swing on, is I'm gonna go to the neck pickup. And, uh, and again, I'm gonna use this, you know, Archer pedal and So, and sometimes I will get it, you know, cause I, that's not really hairy sounding, but there's just a touch of hair on the note. And sometimes I'll get it hairier than that, depending on how much I want to go, you know, Junior Bernard, the, you know. guys I appreciate you uh, watching today and uh, hope hope you've been enjoyed it hope this is a good little taste of a Western swing and uh, I have some really good uh, playlists that uh, and I'll put the link like to the junior Bernard one because that's one of my you know favorites and of course I have an episode on junior and such that uh, you can watch and uh, yeah learn your sixth and nine chord uh, inversions, especially up here on the high three strings, and uh, learn them in, uh, in all the different keys, and uh, you'll go far. All right, guys, thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.